Hey everyone, um, welcome to another video for Radio's Desk. Uh, my name is Mufa Alfred Onen, um, aka Murphy. So, about two years ago, or I think a year plus now, um, I released a, a utility script called the Radio's Desk Installer. Uh, that was just written in Bash. It was something I quickly whipped up just to kind of help me, um, you know, provision new Radio's Desk servers. And I noticed uh, many of you out there have been having, um, you know, some kind of challenges, um, either following the installation guide or you know kind of um getting stuck at some point so um for that i try to see how i can improve the script i mean for some reason a lot of you have been so helpful you know giving out um you know suggestions you know dropping out issues on the github page uh that has helped a lot the only problem was that i've been um you know on and off and uh, for some reason i've not really given it all of my attention you know so right now um basically i have revisited revisited the installer and um, for now, um, everything has been recreated using the Ansible, you know, automation tool. So for me, many of you that are not used to Ansible, uh, it's still fine. Um, you're still going to uh, use the script, um, you know, just fine. But for you guys out there that are, you know, Ansible gurus or have used Ansible before, you should be able to, you know, modify the script and even make it, uh, you know, fit your more advanced use cases. So um, I'm just going to show you how the new installer works using the you know um, Ansible and see how you can actually provision multiple servers at the same time. Um, uh, this is basically using many of the features of Ansible, like uh, you know uh, being uh, item potent. That means uh, you can run it multiple times without actually overwriting stuff you've done already um, and stuff like that. So let's get to it, right? So. This is the you know the new page for the radio size installer. Just an updated instruction on how the new um, installer works. Um, updated the dependencies, if you will, of how it works. So what I've done is um just to kind of get things going and all. Um, I basically created a couple of uh you know um machines you know using Digital Ocean. Um, so I have one CentOS box and one Ubuntu box. I just want I uh, wanted to do this just for the um you know demonstration here. Um, Alright, so if, uh, I've already gotten the IP addresses down. Um, so one of the things you want to do right now is, um, you know, you're going to have a, a controller machine. doesn't matter. It can be the same machine you're going to install um, Radius Desk um, and so on. So uh, the first thing you want to do um, basically is to kind of create an, uh, you know, at least try to log in once using SSH to each of the machines. Uh, the reason for that is, uh, you know, when you run it the first time and Ansible does not, um, uh, tries to find you know, using SSH, if this host has been um, added to the known um, host, uh, then of course it's not gonna find it there and, and it's gonna throw this big error, which throws a lot of people off at first. So the first thing you wanna do is to make sure you just SSH into any of these boxes here. And uh, one thing I've done uh, beforehand is basically just set up SSH, um, you know, passwordless SSH. Um, what that means is I can actually just SSH into these boxes without actually typing a password. Uh, so this is the best thing you, you you should do. Of course, I recommend you do that a lot um, because um, you know it's still secure, more secure than the password. Uh, if you don't do this, then of course at any instance where Ansible uh, tries to connect to each of the machines, uh, you know it's gonna ask you for the password. So if you're really provisioning a lot of servers, it's not gonna be uh, you know the most uh, uh, useful thing in the world. So uh, just create an SSH uh, you know key and copy to the remote machines. That way, you know, basically, you know, anytime you try to access the machines, you don't require the password. It's just going to use SSH authentication. Um, all right, so I've logged into the remote machine um, just once, so I can exit and you know SSH into the second one. Right, so now that we've created uh, at least an instance uh, each of these, we've uh, added this machine to the list of known hosts. Um, you want to make sure you have Git installed, uh, basically. So, uh, base Git version, I guess. Uh, all right, so just make sure you have Git installed, and the reason for that is uh, just because we want to, you know, pull the repository for the Radio Desk installer. Uh, or if you want, if you don't want to use that, you can just download one of the archives here. And it still work fine. So I'm just gonna get the you know, just copy the repo here and do a git clone. So what I want to do is uh, maybe make a directory call installer. All right. So we we'll clone the installer right here. Just give it a moment to clone the repo. Okay. 
All right. So once that's done, uh, you should have the radius desk installer, you know, um, directory. And the first thing you want to do is to make sure that uh, you edit the server's file. So I'm just gonna use nano here. Uh, you can use any tool you want. And you can see here we already have some kind of predefined, um, you know, just examples here, basically. Um, you know, if you're using you know your local host so just make sure you leave uh, everything as is under the default otherwise you know here is just uh you know you don't need this basically you can just edit this out if you want um nothing too fancy here so here i just left one of the groups so you just have to make sure you have one group running and i'm just going to copy you know um, the list of servers i have here so that will be it so i'll save it and the next thing you want to do is to also edit the rd installer Ansible, uh, the YAML file. Um, the reason for that is just to make sure that where you have hosts, it matches the name of the group uh, in the server's file. So notice default is selected here. Uh, if it's prod32 or whatever you've created, uh, just make sure you reference it here. And that's all the change you need. Uh, so for the rest, all you have to do is just basically run the installer. All right and you should be good to go. So um, here, of course, you just wanna get it installed. So you can press um, I or one, anyone should work. Uh, just press I. And now it's gonna start uh, installing Radius Desk or configuring Radius Desk. All right, so because this is gonna actually kickstart a, an Ansible playbook, um, you know, behind the scenes, it's gonna take, uh, you know, it's time to go through each of the servers and, uh, you know, set it up into the states that we've defined. Um, so right now, this is the point where you get a cup of coffee and, you know, uh, just give it some time to do its thing. And then when it's complete, it should return and tell you that it's complete and uh, we'll continue from there. Okay, so uh, basically after, you know, your coffee and all, you should have a complete installation, um, you know, of Radius Desk. And uh, thanks to the installer script, it has really just, you know, taken off all the hassle and stress of trying to, you know, figure out how to set up PHP, you know, um, FPM for Nginx or how to configure the Node.js viewer and all that. So these are really taking care of many of those, um, you know, um, work. And here, because of the demo, basically, I had to show you how to set it up in, uh, you know, multiple uh, operating systems. And you can see how you can set up multiple servers. Um, if you go back to DigitalOcean, basically what I'm doing here is one of this is the Ubuntu 14.04 box. Uh, this is CentOS 6.7. At the moment, CentOS 7 is still in the works. So CentOS Red Hat 7 um, support is still in the works. Uh, but the script has been tested on Ubuntu, you know, Vivid and Willy. Uh, that is 15.04 uh, and 15.10, I believe. Uh, so basically, yeah, you should be able to use it on uh, many of the Ubuntu distributions and all, you know, Red Hat. All right, so with this setup, of course, you know, um, we can always test it out. So uh, we can just take this, you know, just visit the RD page. Uh, we can, you know, just show you. Um, we can take this one as well and, you know, just paste it and allow it to come up. Um, so basically, of course, the first time it runs, it's going to go ahead and pull off, um, you know, resources and cache them. Um, so this is a point where you have to you know, let it load uh, just like this. Um, so yes, I believe the default password is admin and the username is root. And you should be able to log in um, just fine. All right. So this is your new installation of uh, you know, Radio's desk. Uh, a lot of work is still ongoing uh, by the core developer, um, Dirk van der Waals. Uh, he's doing an amazing job uh, he's a very busy person as well so um you know sometimes you know some things you just have to go ahead and figure it out and uh, you can contribute back to the project um so yeah basically this is me logging in on uh, all the machines that's just gone through the installer all right and we all have an identical box here so before i wrap up the video i just want to show you that this is um, highly configurable so i can just you know press q to quit it um, in the roles directory, uh, radius desk, uh, we have a couple of directories as well. One of them is vars. Um, this is the only place I would recommend you go and um, change anything. Uh, this is basically going to show you, you know, a couple of um, defaults, if you will, or you know, um, like the default 
configuration or parameters or variables so that's that so for instance if you are running a Red Hat based system you can actually go ahead and you know just edit this file uh, the file is YAML based if you notice the extension YML so uh, you need to know a couple of things on YAML because YAML is um, heavily dependent on indentation so you just have to get it right um, so a couple of things here you can see these are like um, you, know, you know packages that has been installed some parts some files um, but I would recommend you touch this file only if you know what you're doing um, you know this translates directly to what you have on the radios desk website um, at the moment by default uh, you can see enable covertly support is no so if you just want to set it up uh, set up a captive portal uh, just go ahead and set this to yes and what this could do is go ahead and install uh, Kuva Chili and you know set it up to you know basically uh, your LAN and your WAN interfaces um, so if you're using all the recent um, OS um, you know distro that have uh, adopted a new naming convention for your Ethernet uh, make sure you know those um, name uh, interface names first and then you replace it here so that you know uh, the script knows how to provision your box uh, make sure you change you know of course the IP address to match your networks uh, infrastructure uh, and all that so we're right now by default Google actually um, is disabled you know we have a couple of things here you can see by default the PPTPD is installed but if you're not going to be using it for you know VPN or remote connections of course you can set it to no um, so basically this is just where you configure so many of these options if you want to you know um, change or set the root password to something else of course you can change it from the default root uh, to something else um, you know all, all that uh, you can just go ahead and you know go through this file and see exactly what has been done to make the installer work out pretty well. All right, so with that, um, you know, if you have any comments and questions, please drop them in the comment section on the video. Uh, I'll post some descriptions and links on where to go to. If you notice, um, like the host group description uh, of Ansible, I'll actually put a link there so that you can see how it's done. Um, so if you also want to kind of help out with the project, help extend it, uh, please do so. It's uh, it's free, and uh, please uh, let us know what you've done to you know. If possible, let us know how you've modified it to suit your environment. Uh, it really help us set up a catalog of what people have done, and that way anybody coming to the project or using the installer to set up uh, different scenarios can actually you know get something to you know work with. So with that, uh, thank you a lot, and uh, hope to see you in the next one.